All right, well, we're out here freshwater fishing here on Carr Lake. It's a team old school. We're going to show you how to put a set out to catch uh, freshwater stripers. We're going to use floats, planer boards, split shot lines. And first, I'll show you over here what kind of bait we're using. We just netted earlier. We netted some of these just a little while ago here. If you look, we got some really nice baits here. Normally you don't want to net that many at one time. I'm just doing it for the video purpose. You only want to net one at a time. These are delicate. You want to take your time. Go ahead and pick a good one. Take your time and get a good juicy one here. All right. Take a good look at this bait. This is a thread fin shad. Okay. Has a mouth similar to a herring. On the dorsal here you will see a thread that comes off. Right there. Okay. Now other, other shad have that too. I mean... So don't, be, don't think that if it has that, it's automatically a thread fin. These are a thread fin. I'll show you how we hook these up right now. Okay. Now what I like to do is, I put this little rubber piece here. It's off a plastic worm. And what I like to do is hook from one nostril, little slight wiggle, through to the other nostril. Okay. And what this rubber snub does, it keeps the bait from sliding up and rehooking itself. Okay. So we'll put that in water. Now, these are ready rig floats, okay? First thing you do is you get the boat moving with the trolling motor, okay? You got the boat moving right now with the trolling motor, we use autopilot. Once the boat's moving, we put the bait in the water. I'm going to hold on to this float. This is a spinner reel. We don't fish many spinner reels, but we do like to put one out just to have fun with it, get it way out from the boat. Bait in the water. Now what you do is once the boat is moving, you hold the float. Let out as much line as you as you want your bait to go, as deep as you want your bait to go. We're not going to go very far. We're fishing shallow water on points here. I'm going to go ahead and put maybe 30 feet out, 20 feet here. Now, but you see what I have here? I have the float and the main line coming from the rod. This is braid here. I like to give it a good twist. Push on the bottom of the float. Put the line in the twist. Give it a good push. Make sure it's tight. And that's all there is to it. We put it out. All right, we're just going to go ahead and let the float out. You can see the boat's moving. We're moving about four tenths of a mile an hour. Just go ahead and let it out. Now, when the fish strikes that and pulls the line tight, the loop comes out of that float. The float will slide down to the bait. I'm sorry, it'll actually slide down to the swivel. We put two little glass beads above the swivel. So when that float slides down, it hits the beads. It doesn't go past the beads, past the swivel, and hits the fish. Also, I like glass beads because they make a nice rattle, a little extra noise. So we got that, we're gonna set that out. Now I'm gonna show you how to do a planer board. Okay, as you can see here, I've hooked the bait the same way. A little piece of plastic worm here. This is very important. Otherwise this bait could slide all the way up, flop over and re-hook itself on the side. Fish will take it and you'll miss that fish. Now with a planer board, I'll show you here the beads. Now these beads are the same beads that I put on the float rig. When this slides down, it'll hit the beads and not slide all the way down and knock your fish off or possibly lose the board. So this board snaps on the same way. I write my name on it. My name, my uh, phone number and the VHF channel I'm going to be on. It's a left side board, a port side board. So what I do is I put my rod in my rod holder like this. I put the clicker on. And what I do is I just hold the board with my hand. I'm going to go ahead and just put out, you can see I'm going six feet, that's the length of my arm, six feet, another six, that's twelve, another six, okay, make sure we're moving quick enough here. Now this clips on the exact same way, take the line from the rod, give it a good twist, put it in the release, just like that, okay, see how we put it in? Put it in just like that, it will straighten itself out. What I like to do is just get it back a little bit. I'll stick it in a rod holder. You watch that planer board, and I'll leave the clicker on. And as the boat's moving, that will put itself out. You can see it going on out all by itself. All right, here we go. We got our full spread out here. You can see we have three boards here on the bank side. One two and three 
and when we try to get that last third board uh, close to the bank running you know two three four five feet of water we're a little further out now but we'll move it in and out and a second board here the board here so I'll run three on one side we're on the open side of the creek here so we'll have a board here here and here we run three on this side also uh, if we do start catching all the fish on the open side we will put two more boards on this side we'll pull them from the other side but uh, usually this time of year being December or I'm sorry January uh, the fish will move up on the banks looking for warmer water as the Sun warms it up looking for bait so uh, Oftentimes we'll put five boards on one side and none on the other. Okay, now you can see in the back of the boat here, we have a split shot rig here. That's this rod here with the black reel. That's only about 100 feet out with one medium sized split shot. Same over here, one medium sized split shot. These rods standing straight up. These are our furthest planer boards that are out. Way out there are our floats. We have a float here and a float there. Those floats are up in the T top. That's one float. And this is the other float. We use a spinner reel here, like I said. I hope we got two floats out the back. You can see the rod in this rod holder. As it extends out from the boat, it's slightly lower than the next rod as you can see slightly lower and the last planer board is in the upright rod so if you get a strike on this front board as the boats moving forward the line will go underneath the next rod and not not snagging right into it and if it's a strike on the middle rod it'll pull underneath the back rod and if you have a giant fish you're something you know a good size quality fish if you're especially if you're in a tournament don't feel you know, bad about clearing out all the rods on that side to get your fish in. And uh, you do that and you should be pretty clear. And if you uh, add more rods, just make sure that you start with the front rod aiming more parallel to the water, slightly higher as you move back towards the stern of the boat. All right, setting the drag while the rod is in a rod holder. Uh, what I like to do, and of course it's by anyone's preference, you can do whatever you want, but what I like to do is go ahead and set my drag full at where I would fight my fish at. And this is a lever drag reel, it doesn't matter, you can do it with a star drag. Go ahead and set it at the where you want it to fight at. Okay, once you have that set, put it in the rod holder and back it off just a little bit. So when the fish runs, he has a little more room to move. He can pull the line off easier. When the fish first hits, he freaks out. He goes crazy. He's, he goes in circles. He will put the most pressure on the rod at the strike. So we want to go ahead and loosen the drag at that point, just in case the rod holder's loose. Uh, you know, your knot is not perfect. That's when the most pressure is put on the fish. So I like to loosen it at that point. I pick up the rod. When the reel is, is spitting out drag, when a fish is really pulling hard, I do not set the hook. He's already hooked. Just pick him up, tighten your drag, and fight your fish back to the boat. Also when fishing planer boards, you're often fishing in shallower water. That backboard there may pull you know, into a foot or two of water sometimes, and a lot of times that's where your biggest fish come from. Uh, if I use 30 pound main line on my reel, I'll use a 25 pound leader. This way if I snag off my leader breaks, my planer board slides down to the bead above the leader and I get my planer board back. If you use the same pound test on the reel as you do with the leader, if you snap off above that board then you have to work all the way back to get your board. But uh, it is a necessary out here. You must have a trolling motor with an autopilot. Uh, this will keep you on a heading, whatever speed you want to go. You can go ahead and set it and forget it. I control it here, right on my wrist. I can go left, right. I can control my speed up and down. Uh, I can hit the jackrabbit button there, which automatically goes to full speed if I need to. And my autopilot setting is right there. So right now you can see we're headed towards this bank. And I want to run along parallel to that bank. So what I do is I hit the button on the remote here. and I'll. Go ahead and hit it. 
and you'll see the motor turn okay now the motors turned and as we straighten out as the boat turns you'll see the motor go ahead and follow its heading I'm not touching